Hey guys, Michael here from MichaelSherlock.com. It's October 20th, 2010. Apple's Back to Mac media event was today. They announced a lot of cool things. I'm going to try to get to the gist of it and give you just a quick rundown of it. But there are some of these features that in the coming days I'll try to give you some specific walkthroughs of. These are just quick reviews and I have a few notes that I've jotted down um, just to, if I look down, just so you are aware because a lot of these updates are quite new. Uh, so the first thing they talked about was iLife 11. This thing has been rumored for over a year that it's going to come out, a new version of iLife. One thing that's kind of, uh, kind of disappointing is there's no new app. It's still going to be iDVD, iWeb, iPhoto, GarageBand, and iMovie. But we're going to have a whole new uh, iMovie, GarageBand, and iPhoto. iPhoto is going to obviously get some new templates, but it's also getting social media integration with better Facebook interactions as well as full screen modes. GarageBand is getting groove matching, which is basically spell checker for bad rhyme. So if something doesn't really sound right, there you go. You have a way to check it. And how did I play also? So you can hook up um, you know, your keyboard or your guitar and sort of learn how to play, obviously. But then it can, the computer can actually judge you sort of a rock band style with post analysis, uh, live note monitoring. Um, so that's kind of unique. Um, and also new piano and guitar lessons. iMovie. Finally, some better audio editing controls and options. One step film editing, um, so with some effects that you can add just with one step, one click. Uh, news and sports themes, which we haven't had in the past, as well as movie trailer templates. And what's kind of cool, 24p editing and exporting. So now you can make something that's more cinematic and something that is more professional because it's 24 uh, frames per second. Um, also, we have FaceTime on iOS devices on the iPod Touch and the iPhone 4. Now we're getting that for Mac OS X, actually, so there's an application, a beta that you can download now, and actually through email addresses, sort of the way that the iPod Touch handles it, um, you can have FaceTime video chat. Now let's talk about hardware for a second before we get into the biggest announcement today. As many of you suspected, new MacBook Airs today. Uh, it looks sort of the same, although it's thinner at uh, 11 inches at the skinniest to points or point 11 at the skinniest to point 68 inches at the biggest uh, less than three pounds which is quite remarkable 13 inch model and an 11 inch model which is pretty interesting all SSD storage I found this quite interesting um, it's not the biggest hard drives in the world obviously they're not hard drives anymore some of the specs are kind of low uh, like Core 2 Duo old Core 2 Duo architecture, same as, uh, or just not the newest model uh, chip, starting at 1.4 gigahertz, upgradable to 1.6. That's pretty old school, if you know what I mean. But all the storage is done on an SSD, which I think is really cool to increase battery performance, which they're using a lot of new space that they have with uh, SSD chips right on the logic board to get more battery life. So five to seven hours of battery life on the... Um, on the 11 inch to the 13 inch model and um, what's unique is, or not unique, but just something that, that's interesting to note these aren't just the same battery tests we've always had Apple says now they're using a much more rigorous scale for judging battery performance so the idea is this is web usage so if you were actually using it this is how much time you would get five to, to seven hours and 30 days on standby with so instant on for that so the, the whole idea is you know you'll be able to open it and you'll always have juice and that's obviously what they're trying to sell you on and you also, uh, for graphics, the NVIDIA GeForce 3200 or 320M, and these models are starting at $999. But what's the biggest thing? What, what, what really happened here? Well, in the same way that they uh, previewed Snow Leopard, they actually previewed Mac OS 10.7 Lion. And there are about four uh, highlights that I just want to give you. Of course, uh, as that comes closer to launch, which would be summer 2011, We'll, we'll have more information about that. But the first thing I want to talk about, Mission Control. They're actually taking Exposé, Spacious, and Dashboard and sort of merging it into, into Mission Control and making it one thing. So you'll have one swipe uh, to, to Exposé or to show all your, your layouts of open apps, dashboard widgets, and other spaces. So you just one swipe, one click. And it's sort of like expose, but you can see all the spaces too, and your dashboard widgets can be there. So it's much more unified. Um, and again, that's just one swipe away. Uh, I want to talk about multi-touch support. Now, Apple said that uh, they made one, they made a comment that said vertical multi-touch is not good. It's not ergonomic uh, for a, a computer. 
So, how are we going to use multi-touch? Well, there, of course, the new glass trackpads, and there's a new glass trackpad on that MacBook Air I was telling you about before. But you'll be able to swipe between full-screen applications, swipe between Launchpad pages. And what is Launchpad? Well, Launchpad is uh, a way that they're going to see all of your open apps. All apps, when they're installed, will automatically put into Launchpad. And you'll be able to open a Launchpad to get an iOS-styled look at all of your applications. And there are also folders that look just like iOS does on the iPad. Um, so system-wide support for full screen mode as well. So you'll be able to more f focus on one thing because it's full screen and that's throughout the operating system, not just app by app. Um, so the way that really kind of works together is you can be working full screen, then use multi-touch to swipe across, use a command to get to um, your launch pad, and then you can swipe through with multi-touch gestures just as you would do uh, you know, on an iPad and go through and look at all of your applications, which is pretty unique and pretty interesting. But finally, the biggest thing that probably has come out of this is actually the Mac App Store. Just like iOS devices have an App Store, now Mac products are going to have an App Store too. Um, that one thing that's different though is it's not as locked down as iOS devices, so you'll still be able to install apps that aren't in the, app, the Mac App Store. But apps that are, you'll be able to one-click download and install. There'll be free apps as well as pay apps. And that still will be 3070 for devs in case that's something that they're interested in. So you will be paying to get in there, whereas if you just released it on your website, you wouldn't have to do that. But there's some, there are several benefits for the user. Auto updates as well as ease of use. Again, just one click and it'll be automatically downloaded. It'll be put into your launch panel. It'll be put into your dock. Uh, iOS App Store for Mac OS X is basically how you can compare it. It's licensed on all your Macs and you can re-download it. So if you have multiple apps, it's really easy, or multiple Macs, it's really easy to get the apps updated and everything on all your computers because you buy it on one and then it's essentially pushed down um, and it's just really easy to get it on all of your computers, whereas you'd have to go through license keys and all this other stuff to get it working. Um, and what's also cool is it's also coming to Snow Leopard. Actually, within 90 days of today, so by the end of the year, we should be seeing Launchpad or uh, Mac App Store on our current hardware as well, which will be pretty interesting to see how that works out. Obviously, that 90 days, it says within 90 days. Um, so we'll see how quickly developers can, can get on that. Obviously, they're not going to want to release a product that doesn't have anything in it. You know, we've seen that with when the Android Store first launched. Even when the Apple iOS Store first launched, it was kind of weak, kind of sad. And they definitely don't want that to happen again. Um, so just quickly, some of my reactions here. I'm a little disappointed that iLife didn't get more updates. I'm disappointed they didn't have an app, a new app in there. I was kind of hoping that they'd have uh, an iOS development app. So you don't have to be a programmer, but a more what you see is what you get. Sort of like iWeb, uh, except it, wouldn't, it would be for applications. I thought that would be something cool. We did not see that. Um, and I would have also liked uh, definitely iWeb to see updates too. The templates are really old and kind of, kind of stale. For the MacBook Air, I was a little disappointed at the specs on those bad boys. Obviously, the price has gone down a little bit, but 1.4 gigahertz, this is in 2006. Uh, FaceTime for Mac OS X, where's the Windows variant? And also, can you please give us an update so we can use FaceTime over 3G? Come on, man. And finally, uh, Mac OS 10.7 Lion, um, we, don't really, we don't really know a lot about it. I think it's an interesting thing to go here, and uh, um, hopefully that... You know, the multi touch gestures will work out, especially the one problem I see is if that's something that they heavily focus on, it's going to be kind of a hassle for older hardware, as well as um, iOS style for Launchpad. I think that's kind of weird. I mean, this is sort of fine, but I think it needs to be improved on iOS, and now it's going to be on the computer. We'll, we'll see how that works out when we finally get that next summer. So I'm Michael Sherlock from michaelsherlock.com. I kind of hustled through that because I just wanted to get the information out to you. And of course, there will be more content coming for you soon on youtube.com slash the revived one or michaelsherlock.com. Thanks for watching, guys. What is your favorite update coming out of this Back to Mac event? I'd love to hear in the comments below. And have a nice day, guys.